talk about uh, some of the uh, experiences over the last uh, year or so. I presented in that year, uh, and also some of the new products and initiatives we have as part of the uh, Raspberry Pi Foundation. Um, the first pretty big major news is that as of May 2014, there have been 3 million units of the Raspberry Pi sold. Um, this was uh, at Buckingham Palace in uh, the UK with the Queen of England. Um, this was announced uh, around a month ago, but um, we've had significant success with making Raspberry Pi as a platform of choice for uh, a very wide range of uh, activities. And just some background, some history, um, you know, this is how we started. The first model was actually the uh, Raspberry Pi Model B. Um, this was what, uh, you know, uh, or this is what has been the most uh, uh, successful of the current models. Um, this has uh, the same CPU uh, with 512 megabytes of memory. It had two USB ports, Ethernet, HDMI, and the audio. Um, the openness of this platform. Uh, both in the hardware and the software, um, you know, Linux-based, uh, open-source GPU software, um, uh, open-source uh, uh, hardware design schematics, mechanicals, etc. being fully available, um, basically has encouraged the community to come up with a lot of applications around this. Um, some of the most in more interesting applications we've seen over the last uh, year or so. Uh, have been some things like um, a portable computer, um, you know, like a tablet, uh, an arcade gaming machine. Um, uh, people have designed this into automotive space, uh, you know, designing this into an in-car navigation computer. Um, there have been uh, a lot of use cases of people buying this as a media center. This has been one of the most popular. Um, designs and use cases for, for the Type B. Um, some other interesting applications here, uh, a bartender mixing all different kinds of uh, drinks and serving drinks, uh, using the Raspberry Pi to control uh, fireworks and uh, pyrotechnics for uh, both commercial uh, as well as uh, sort of just uh, fun. Um, people have started using it, uh, you know, uh, we don't really think it's a wearable computer, but uh, something like a wearable computer, like a Google Glass uh, kind of design. Uh, there have been uh, a lot of professional photographers who've used uh, the Raspberry Pi in designs um, related to uh, controlling cameras and things like that. Uh, some of the applications I don't have them here on these slides, but some of the applications that have uh, been used uh, maybe some interest to the, the people here is things like uh, cluster computing, uh, supercomputing. Um, there are designs that use hundreds of Raspberry Pis together as a cloud computing uh, network. Uh, people have definitely used this for building uh, small portable web servers. So um, the Type B has uh, actually been quite successful in creating a platform that's very extensible. Um, in terms of uh, its uh, uh, software capabilities, um, you know, it, it's, I think it's hard to imagine a 700 megahertz uh, ARM 11 CPU having you know three years of uh, lifespan in this industry and selling 3 million units. But the main reason has been um, the the community, the capability to innovate on the platform without restriction, um, the limitations of the CPU haven't been really um, that major in terms of restricting the kind of use cases uh, for this design. Um, this is another commercial use case uh, where uh, it's um, the Raspberry Pi has been used to control lighting effects, uh, you know, in a water fountain. Um, this is actually a real commercial deployment. Um, and then. 
Maker Fair, um, uh, I think the Maker Fair was here in Taipei in May, but this is from Maker Fair in uh, San Francisco earlier this year. Uh, you know, uh, somebody actually designed this into a transformer. You know, transformer movies are great now, and uh, uh, I don't think uh, the buy has the capability to actually uh, participate, but somebody has figured out how to make that happen uh, into some kind of a toy or, a, or a controlling a, a robot. Uh, kind of application. So that was all about the Model B. That was the that still today is the mainstream platform, uh, and it will be uh, available and continue to be available for a long time in the future. As you can see, um, with that some of the applications I showed you in industrial control or lighting control and lighting effects. You know these are not just hobbyists, these are real commercial use cases. Uh, maybe somebody designing a supercomputing cluster, that's also you know, um, more or less uh, like a, you know, education or uh, 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 an academic research kind of uh, application. So the Model B uh, is available, will still continue to be available. Uh, it doesn't change because there's a lot of uh, investment that has gone into the Model B, both in terms of uh, hardware and in terms of software. Um, the Model A was the second model that was introduced. Um, the primary goal of the Model A originally was just to have a lower cost platform. Um, it, you know, uh, it achieved that lower cost by making a few compromises, uh, 256 megabytes of memory, uh, no Ethernet uh, and only a single USB port. Um, however, once this was actually available in the market, uh, some of its other advantages became more apparent. The first one is that it was significantly lower in power consumption. And the second one was it was quite a bit lighter than the Model B. So um, the Model A actually has become quite suitable for certain applications where weight and uh, perhaps battery life or more battery operated uh, uh, power uh, optimized uh, solutions required uh, without significantly compromising the user experience in terms of performance. So some of the areas where the Model A has been used uh, versus Model B is where you don't need networking. Uh, for example, um, in, in the top left, you can see uh, basically that say um, it's a stuffed uh, bear that has a Model A integrated inside it and has a, a camera, and that was actually sent off into space or almost into space. It was tied to a, a, a helium balloon, and it it achieved the uh, um, high altitude. Now you can see the use case here. Obviously, it's in a balloon. It's not connected to anything, so it doesn't need Ethernet. But it has to be light. It has to be battery operated so that it can, uh, you know, continue to run and take pictures for a long time. Uh, similarly, um, you know, the, the other example here is a, is a radiology workstation. Again, it's you know, it doesn't need um, the Ethernet connectivity. It just needs to be uh, portable. It needs to be battery operated. Uh, for going on the field, of course, it's in a pumpkin, but it doesn't have to be in a pumpkin. So these are examples where the Model A uh, really uh, shined. And again, you know, another example. This is a uh, uh, this is a UK example uh, of a of a telephone box, a police telephone box that was again connected to a hard, uh, a helium balloon and sent off. Uh, almost in space. And the picture you see in the background, that's a real picture taken from the Raspberry Pi. That is the curvature of the Earth. Uh, and I'll show you a couple of other examples. So these are pictures that were taken by a Raspberry Pi uh, as it floated off uh, into space or almost into space. This is actually a very common hobby uh, use case that a lot of uh, uh, people have started to do with the Raspberry Pi is to basically connect it to uh, you know balloons and float it up to take pictures. Now, how or why uh, it makes it easy? Because the third product that we developed and we delivered as part of the Raspberry Pi ecosystem was the camera module. So this is a very lightweight 
camera design. It uses a 5 megapixel sensor. Uh, it supports uh, uh, 5 megapixel stills as well as uh, full HD video. Connects to the Raspberry Pi both the uh, model A and the model B. And um, basically, it uh, it was responsible for some of the pictures you saw in the previous slide. Um, actually, if you go on to Flickr, you'll see a significant uh, number of such. Um, you know, experiments where people have used the Raspberry Pi along with its connected camera to um, take uh, a lot of uh, interesting photography pictures. Uh, photography. Um, uh, and some of the new applications that started to become available by combining the accessory with uh, the basic platform. Uh, an example of this is a, a security camera. Um, uh, this is a, a person in the UK who basically used a Raspberry Pi uh, connected with the camera module and put it into a traditional security camera casing. So instead of having to buy a 2000 US dollar camera, uh, security camera for monitoring their house, they basically built this entire kit in less than 100 US dollars. And with the same, almost the same functionality as a traditional security camera. Uh, of course, this is a hobbyist uh, doing that. Uh, so you can see that's an interesting application there. Uh, another interesting application was uh, a bird feeder. So this is, uh, again, uh, in the UK, uh, a design where they use the camera as a mechanism to trigger the, uh, the bird feeder. So every time a bird came in and sat on the nest, and the camera detected that there was a bird in front, it opened up the, uh, the feeder and fed, fed the bird. So this is another interesting application uh, out of using the camera. Um, this is uh, some examples of the photography from the, uh, from the camera. The, the power of the GPU within um, the Raspberry Pi gives uh, advantages in, uh, in using it for some interesting applications. So this is, uh, you know, uh, this is basically uh, low, low light photography. So on the left you can see just a single picture and you see it's not very sharp in focus. But then, you, can, you know, you take 42 pictures and you stack them, use the GPU performance to basically combine these pictures together. You can see the quality of the picture that's produced. Uh, there are some other examples where people have used um, the power of the GPU. Um, there is a uh, there's a design that was shown in uh, Maker Fair in uh, San Francisco a few months ago, where they used uh, 32 Raspberry Pis together to create a 3D um, uh, 3D image simultaneously. So it used 32 Raspberry Pis in a cone environment to do motion capture, uh, you know, like for 3D special effects or CGI and uh, use the horsepower of the GPU to basically combine these 32 images into a full 3D image of a human body or a human person. So you could basically stand in front of these 32 cameras, they took your picture, and out came a 3D model of your body. That's a, an application that was shown leveraging the performance uh, and the power of the GPU and the scalability of the architecture. Um, the fourth, uh, or, or I should say the second accessory that came out of the uh, Raspberry Pi effort was basically taking the existing camera and uh, removing the IR filter in front of the, uh, the lens. Um, so the, the, the performance of the camera is very similar, identical to the previous one, but the big advantage is that it doesn't have an IR filter in front of uh, the lens. Now, what advantages does it give you? The advantage it gives you is that now you can use this camera to do a lot of special effects. Uh, you can use your own custom filters. You can build hardware that's more interesting in terms of the lighting. You can use uh, infrared light to take pictures at night. Um, you can take pictures of wildlife uh, in, in low light. Um, so there's a lot of, again, use cases where uh, having a camera without an IR filter makes it interesting. And uh, in fact, uh, on the uh, RS Component Design Spark website, there's a whole uh, section on how to leverage the uh, no IR um, camera with various filters to do um, interesting um, photography. 
So either use uh, infrared filters, use infrared light um, to do, uh, take pictures in the, in the dark, uh, or to take pictures that are you know, filtered and you can use uh, uh, special effects to, to make it look better. So again, a couple of examples where people have used the IR filter, uh, I'm sorry, the IR, no IR camera lens. So on the top left, this is a wildlife photography. So these are hedgehogs, um, they're very shy, they come out only at night, and uh, they're you know, very hard to photo photograph. Um, and the picture above was uh, taken uh, in a setup that included uh, IR uh, infrared LEDs to uh, provide the lighting and uh, the Raspberry Pi to basically provide the control uh, of the uh, no IR um, camera. Uh, and then uh, the one on the, the right, this is a, again a, a wildlife uh, feeding monitoring station. Um, you know, uh, it's completely in the dark. Uh, the birds go in, they go into the nest, and again the Raspberry Pi with the camera controls the feeding, uh, controls the, uh, or, or monitors the, the birds and make sure that uh, you know um, they're healthy, etc. So these are some applications uh, of the uh, no IR filter uh, camera. Um, another application: this is uh, for gardening, uh, soil and environmental monitoring system. So this uh, uh, this uses the Pi in a lot of interesting ways. It uses the GPIOs to connect a number of uh, sensors. It connects a pH sensor, it connects a, a humidity moisture sensor, uh, it also uses the camera. Uh, so this measures the, uh, the, uh, the moisture in the, in the soil, it measures the acidity in the soil, uh, it uh, uh, monitors the, uh, uh, the, the, the light you, uh, uh, available and regulates the watering of the plants. Uh, that regulates uh, opening and closing the, uh, the sunscreen to make sure there's adequate lighting. So, of course, this is a, uh, a hobbyist uh, design for a small scale, you know, uh, private garden. But you can think of taking such a design and, and scaling it up into a more commercial farming or a commercial greenhouse uh, kind of environment as well. So, so far, you've seen a lot of hobbyist projects, and you've seen a lot of, um, you know, potentially commercial use cases of the Raspberry Pi. But um, you know, we haven't forgotten uh, why the foundation was created in the first place. Um, the original goal, and, and today the primary goal of the foundation, is to encourage education, is to encourage computer education, is to encourage people like you, uh, you know, from childhood to basically uh, experiment with the science and technology, uh, specifically with programming, with electronics, getting, getting your hands dirty, if you will, building uh, you know, uh, devices and projects and things like that. So this is one of the examples uh, where the foundation has been instrumental again in, uh, in the education area. So this is a project that's uh, funded uh, in part by UNICEF, uh, in part by Kickstarter, to provide uh, means for education for the refugees of these, uh, or the children of the refugees of the civil war in, in Syria. So this is in partnership with uh, Khan Academy, uh, uh, some, most, some or most of you might be familiar with that, to provide uh, essentially a display, uh, the, it's a Raspberry Pi on the back, to provide the, the web access and the connectivity for um, the Khan Academy um, uh, content. And uh, the display uh, is a low cost, uh, you know, rocket, something that can be used in a war zone. And it's intended really to, to uh, use online teaching um, to basically uh, provide education in the refugee camps uh, in Syria. Um, the other uh, big uh, you know, effort within the uh, Raspberry Pi Foundation and the community is to extend the community itself. So we strongly encourage people to build accessories build uh, devices that plug and extend the functionality of the Pi. I mean, obviously, in the foundation, we're doing some of that, like you saw the camera modules. But this is an example from the community. This is from a company in the UK called Energy. And they build smart plugs 
Um, they build uh, RF controlled uh, power plugs that you can use for doing things like monitoring your electricity consumption, turning on and off lights when you're not there on timers, etc. So they've built a kit that basically plugs into the GPIOs of the, uh, the Raspberry Pi and allows you to use the Raspberry Pi to be the controller for these smart plugs. So it comes with two smart plugs and an and adapter. So this is a way now for hobbyists uh, you know, or people who want to build their own uh, home automation uh, solution or home control solution where they can use uh, this community developed uh, platform and write their own software. They can, uh, this is again used as an open SDK, write their own software, write their own control um, uh, applications and uh, extend the functionality of the buy. Uh, another example of the community and uh, this is from Adafruit. Um, this is uh, uh, actually the results of this contest are going to be probably announced in the next uh, couple of days here. So this was a photography contest that was um, uh, funded and uh, pushed by uh, Adafruit. Um, this is to take advantage of the Raspberry Pi and its camera. So um, this is uh, basically to uh, allow um, again hobbyists and users uh, and uh, people in the community to show off their projects, their skills. Uh, it's a way to create more of a community. I mean, the, the reason why Raspberry Pi is so successful and has uh, you know uh, such a large market adoption is the community. Uh, and what people are doing with it, what people are uh, experimenting with it, what, how, and more important, what they're doing and what they're making available to others to copy or to follow. Um, as part of that effort, of course, uh, Magpie, this is the, uh, the official uh, magazine, uh, if you will, um, that uh, highlights all kinds of uh, interesting applications, interesting projects that people have developed in the community. Uh, for example, this is the latest issue. Uh, this talks about uh, building an oscilloscope. Uh, it talks about, uh, you know, I mentioned using the Model A for uh, balloon uh, or high altitude uh, experiments. So one of the projects in this is to use sensors uh, integrated with the Model A to do high altitude weather measurements. Um, you know, um, uh, and uh, also examples, another example is uh, how to do, uh, you know, for example, Wi-Fi sniffers, building a Wi-Fi sniffer uh, with the Pi. So every issue of the Mac Pi has lots of interesting projects, um, not just done by the people writing the magazine. Ultimately, most of these projects are projects that are actually being done by the community, the larger community worldwide developing projects that then they are willing to share with other users and show how to do that. So that includes both the hardware design, the software design, you know, um, applications like, for example, if they use Python or C++ or um, other uh, programming languages, that code and those um, uh, applications are all freely available for the community to leverage. So, um, where are we going next? So this was about the past almost, you know, uh, three years of work um, and just give you a snapshot of where we were. Um, now where are we going? I mean, uh, you know, we are obviously continuing to build new interesting products um, that enhances the, the community. Uh, and the first one of this is, uh, this was announced uh, probably a month uh, uh, plus ago. Uh, this is the Raspberry Pi compute module. So as we um, so, uh, a lot of people started to use the Raspberry Pi as a base platform for doing interesting commercial designs. Um, designs that made sense, uh, not just for hobbies, but to figure out a way to scale it, um, make it more readily available. So in order to facilitate that, we've come up with a platform that essentially is software compatible with the Model B but it extends the Model B in certain directions. The first one is it, it makes available all of the GPIOs of the hardware. So there's a 120 pin GPIO connector. It basically brings out every single um, peripheral in the CPU. Uh, SOC, it brings out all of the uh, hardware control pins. Um, so now you can build more 
uh, interesting um, uh, hardware designs. Uh, it also was the first uh, design to start optimizing the power consumption of the solution. So moving towards uh, using more low power components, uh, integrating uh, more of the power management into the, uh, into the design itself. And then in addition, it uh, brought in some uh, EMMC memory. So instead of you requiring external SD card like the original Raspberry Pi does, um, this makes it easier for commercial use cases. Uh, it's packaged in a standard SODIMM uh, form factor, so it's uh, relatively small. It supports the Raspberry Pi camera. It supports uh, a future Raspberry Pi LCD display that's coming. And uh, basically uh, encourages commercial use cases uh, for the Pi. And then most recently, you know, uh, just a couple of days ago, uh, we announced the Raspberry Pi Model B Plus. And uh, this is uh, uh, a design that extends the existing Model B. The existing Model B will continue to be available, but this extends the existing Model B in a few areas to make it, uh, give it a little bit more life, give it a little bit more room to grow. Um, and in fact, uh, on the RS Components booth upstairs on the second floor, shortly you can actually see this uh, platform and you can even buy it there. Um, so what are the differences between the Model B Plus and the, the, the existing Model B? One of the first things you'll notice from the hardware design perspective is mechanically it's identical or it's, uh, it uses the same form factor. So any housing design, any case design, any uh, mechanical design that, that people have done for the Model B can be reused and will work exactly identically with the Model B Plus. But We've added some things here to make it easier for folks to use. Um, you can see the four mounting screw holes. Um, this makes it easier to mount the device into cases. The original Model B did not have any mounting holes. Um, so this allows uh, uh, some new uh, use cases or new design uh, techniques. And some of the other features that we've extended here. The first one is there are a lot more GPIOs available. Um, we've extended the GPIO header to 40 pins. Uh, we've kept it compatible with the existing GPIO design on the Model B. So if somebody has an accessory that they've designed or if they have uh, designed any special circuitry to fit into the existing Model B, it'll continue to work on the B+. But now that we have more, an extra 14 pins, more IOs are available. So not just for GPIO purpose, but for some of the other uh, peripherals that the original uh, Model B was not able to bring out. Um, there are more USB ports. We've uh, uh, stepped up the number of USB ports from two to four. Um, this gives you again a scalability in the number of peripherals you can connect. Um, also, we've changed the, uh, the power design. Uh, one of the biggest uh, complaints and challenges on the original Model B was the fact that uh, it didn't behave very well with respect to a uh, hot plug or when you connected devices that consume more power than uh, the, the board could supply. So we've designed, redesigned that portion. Uh, we've uh, moved over from a, a you know, SD card to a micro SD. Uh, micro SD now obviously being the more popular form factor, more readily available uh, in the market. So we've changed the design over to support a micro SD. Um, we've also focused on power consumption again. So we've uh, replaced all the linear regulators that we had in the original design with uh, switching regulators. So this has effectively reduced the power consumption of the total uh, hardware design by around a watt. Um, make it again more suitable for some new interesting applications that people might think of. Um, on the audio side, we have now we now have a dedicated uh, low noise uh, power supply, so the audio quality has been improved again for people building uh, media centers or digital signage or some other um, use cases like that. Um, better audio quality, uh, and then uh, as you can uh, as I mentioned before, we've added the four mounting holes, making it easier for mechanically fitting this into uh, lots of different uh, housing designs. 
Uh, we've uh, basically uh, cleaned up the uh, edge of the board so it's easier to design uh, mechanicals uh, for this. So again, you know, if you're leveraging some of the tools from RS Components, if you use DesignSpark 3D, uh, you know, you'll be able to build uh, better housing, better looking housing, uh, better mechanical solutions for the Model B+. Plus. So uh, speaking of design, Spark, uh, the Model B Plus is already up on the RS component side. It's already up on the Design Spark side. They already have some interesting blogs on uh, leveraging some of the newer GPIOs. Uh, one of the first blog entries actually on the, uh, the Model B Plus uh, on the Design Spark side is to show how to use the uh, extended GPIOs to provide more uh, functionality, more control functionality, more. Um, uh, you know, I/O functionality. Um, there's a lot of other examples there of uh, leveraging the B plus. Um, so you're definitely encouraged to go to the Design Spark site and uh, look at that and participate. Uh, hopefully, in creating new products that we can highlight here maybe a year from now. So um, some of the things that are coming um, in the near future. Um, you know, this is again the Model P Plus was announced a few days ago. It's ready to available. Uh, in fact, it's available at this conference. Uh, you know, if you're interested, you can go purchase it right now, or you know, obviously on the RS Components website, it's available as well. So, what are the things that we're working on that will be available probably over the next few months, or what are the things that are coming in the next few months? Um, one of the things that uh, we're bringing um, uh, as part of uh, uh, the efforts into the Internet of Things, uh, this is a project that was done by somebody, uh, you know, it sort of highlights the ultimate vision of IoT. Uh, this is a Internet connected uh, toilet. Uh, it basically records the amount, number of times that you flush your toilet and how much water you're using and it also records uh, you know how much toilet paper you use and how often you need to replace your toilet paper and uploads that data to the cloud so this is you know basically the ultimate iot uh, uh, vision so in order to facilitate more of the projects like this so this this particular design done by this individual uses a proprietary, uh, not proprietary, but uses a, uh, an, a, you know, a 350 megahertz wireless design. Um, but in order to facilitate more applications like this in the IoT space, uh, we're bringing some accessories. So the first one, uh, or the first couple of accessories that will be available through the RS Components website here shortly in the next uh, month or so is uh, what we call an IoT development kit. So this basically extends um, the Raspberry Pi in a couple of ways. It adds support for Wi-Fi connectivity. Uh, it also adds support for Bluetooth Smart. Um, you know, some of you might know that by uh, as Bluetooth Low Energy. And it brings a number of uh, sensors into directly into um, the Raspberry Pi ecosystem. So um, things like uh, pressure sensor, temperature, humidity. Uh, G, G, uh, G sensor, e compass. Um, so this will be available. Uh, the design kits are available, and uh, you know, for people who are interested, they can create use Design Spark to create derivative designs of this. So this create, you know, this brings a total ecosystem, and you know, brings all the flexibility to create uh, a lot of interesting IoT designs. So you've got Ethernet that's built in. You get Wi-Fi as an accessory, you get Bluetooth Smart as an accessory, you get all the, the GPIO control that's built into the Pi, but then you get all the different environmental sensors um, that are connected over uh, Bluetooth Smart to the Pi. So you can sort of build, mix and match these devices to build interesting applications. Um, the other major event that's happening here uh, on August 16th, um, so Eben Alton, uh, he, um, he is one of the founding directors uh, and board members of the Raspberry Pi Foundation. In fact, uh, he's probably the most visible of the uh, Raspberry Pi Foundation uh, officers. Uh, he's also actually a Broadcom employee in the UK. Uh, he'll be in Taiwan uh, on the 16th of August um, at the Raspberry Pi Jam hosted by RS. 
and uh, we'll be talking to him and uh, you know everybody is uh, invited to register meet with Evan uh, Evan drives most of the uh, so the roadmap for Raspberry Pi in terms of the technical features the capabilities uh, he also drives most of the community outreach efforts so you know uh, the blog um, the the forums uh, working with schools and educators, uh, working with the community in terms of uh, Maker Faire, things like that. Evan is uh, uh, very much involved in all of that. So you're all welcome to uh, join us and have that discussion with Evan about where you think, uh, perhaps you have ideas, uh, where you think the Raspberry Pi uh, Foundation go, can go in in new directions, perhaps if you have projects that you'd like to highlight, um, you know, if you have activities that you would like to see uh, us focus on more, um, not only here uh, in Taiwan, but maybe in the region or even worldwide, uh, you're definitely invited to come and contribute uh, to with, our, with us. So, thank you very much. I think uh, what's made us very, very successful has been the community, which has helped us drive um, innovation uh, and has helped us drive uh, the original goal and the main most important goal which is education. Education in all senses of the word, uh, not only in terms of schools and you know children and school education, but really educating the community, um, you know, allowing new innovative designs both in the hardware and software to be available. Uh, we couldn't do any of this and uh, we couldn't be successful in any of this without having the broad community support that we have. So, uh, you know, thank you only, uh, not only as an audience here today, but, uh, you know, thank you everyone who's been participating with us uh, as part of the community. Um, that's all I had from a presentation standpoint. Uh, and, uh, you know, I see we have a few minutes here, so I'm open for questions. Uh, any questions both on, uh, you know, where we were or what uh, we were doing for the past few years and also where we're going. <coughs> Uh, with respect to Raspberry Pi, um, you know, please quickly. Uh, yes. Yes. 
想要推动哪一方面的产业，或者是是啊那个方面的事情？呃、uh, ，in education, you have the first very high foundation that achieve uh anything, but uh, there are some area to fill. Are there any uh future plan for the foundation? In in terms of sorry, uh. uh Okay, so the um, the core goal of the foundation is still to be primarily community focused and drive uh, education. Uh, but as you can see, um, you know we do and we have come up with, for example, the compute module. Um, the compute module is an example where um, the goal is to extend more commercial, industrial use cases. You know more non education uh, kind of use cases. So uh, similarly with the IoT design kit that I showed there, it's also focused on uh, more of a, um, you know, like a Juno style uh, design where it's for the hobbies who are trying to get into the more commercial space. Um, we're trying to balance the two. Um, there will always be an education focus uh, and that is, uh, so if you, if you look at the organization structure now, there are two parts to the Raspberry Pi Foundation. The Raspberry Pi Foundation itself is still a non-profit focused on education and schools and uh, you know, driving that, that uh, focus. But there is a Raspberry Pi Training Corporation which is focused on the more uh, hobbyist and commercial use cases of the Pi. So there will be more platforms coming. Uh, for example, I mentioned in my talk about the uh, Raspberry Pi uh, LCD uh, display. Right? The primary use case again for that is going to be like a Juno style, you know, industrial or, or embedded use case rather than education. So some of the accessories that we're bringing uh, into the market. Uh, are geared towards the more uh, hobbyist, uh, non-education focus. So there will be a balance uh, in, in what we do, uh, as much as trying to keep uh, the original goal intact and alive, plus try to address the demands of the market. Thank you very much.